All right, so we're going to start talking about the cardiovascular system. This is a little unique for me. Usually we do this during week seven, but this semester I changed things up. Um, and so we're going to be doing this during the fourth week. Uh, the next three weeks are, is going to all be about the cardiovascular system. So you're going to learn a lot about the heart. Um, and so to start off, we're going to be talking about the functions and just a little bit about plasma. So here are the objectives for this video. So major functions and plasma, just like I said. Now, when it comes to the cardiovascular system, it's the transportation um, area of the, of the body. And so you could look at it in that it's trying to deliver oxygen and nutrients to the tissues throughout the body, as well as remove carbon dioxide and waste products. But really when it comes down to it, it's strictly a transportation system. Um, now, in order to facilitate this, this, uh, this ability, it also creates a pressure gradient. And remember, things move from high concentration or high pressure to low pressure in this case. And so the heart, by contracting very forcefully, specifically the left ventricle, we've got high pressure in the left ventricle and very low pressure on the right side. And what that does is that allows blood to flow one way, which is good. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, and what's really interesting is that the heart pumps just hard enough for blood to leave the left ventricle, go wherever it's going throughout the body, and then ultimately get back to the right atria. Uh, the pressure of blood returning to the right atria is just above zero, whereas the pressure of blood leaving your heart is about 100 to 120 millimeters of mercury. So just some random facts about the heart. I really like the heart. And we're going to do an activity in the heart just to kind of give you an idea, to help you have an idea of just how... Um, incredible the heart is uh, most of us have about five liters of blood in our body and in about a typical minute um, your heart pumps about five liters of blood through it the heart beats approximately 100,000 times a day doesn't stop ever um, which is good because then bad things happen right um, and in doing so about 7,000 liters of blood goes through your heart every day that's about 1800 gallons Okay, so um, there's about a gallon's worth of blood, a little bit more in your body, and then you've got nearly 1,800 gallons of blood pumping or going through your heart every day. Um, in elite athletes, and what I mean by elite athletes, I'm talking about like Olympic level cross country skiers, marathoners, distance runners, that sort of thing, um, probably in, in some of those rowers as well. Um, your heart can pump hard enough to pump 40 liters a minute, or their heart can pump hard enough to f have 40 liters a minute, um, 40 liters of blood go through it every minute, which is about 10 gallons. So um, we, we keep a lot of milk in my house, but I don't think I've ever had 10 gallons of, of milk in my, my fridge at once. I think I've had five. And just to, you know, just think of trying to dump out 10 gallons of milk in a minute, let alone have it go through this pump. Okay, so plasma is the, the liquid part of the blood, and it's almost all water, but there's a little bit of protein, and then even a, a smaller amount of solute and electrolytes like sodium and potassium and chloride and stuff like that. Now, the, the makeup of the plasma itself is very similar to interstitial fluid, and that's the fluid that's in between cells. It's not inside the cells, but it's in between the cells. And this is important because if it was different from interstitial fluid, then we're creating a gradient, and so ions are going to either come into the plasma or they're going to leave the plasma, and we don't want that to happen. Okay, and the proteins that are in the, pla uh, in the plasma um, are very important as well, and we'll get into that in just a second. Now there's many, many types of plasma proteins. We're gonna focus on four, and these two that are in bold are actually the ones that we'll talk about later on in the semester. Now if you notice here, all of the, <clears throat> all of the proteins are produced in the liver, um, but each of them has a different function. So we've got albumin, which we'll talk about a little bit later in the cardiovascular system. That helps create a gradient, so we have what we call colloid osmotic pressure. Remember with osmosis, fluid is moving because proteins or ions can't. Well, albumin is kept inside the blood vessel because it's too big to leave. And so what that does is that holds on to the water that would have a tendency to leave if there were openings for the water to leave, which is true in the capillary. Then we've got globulin, um, which helps with clotting. Fibrinogen, which also helps with clotting. It actually forms kind of this mesh network that we'll talk about uh, later, later on. 
Um, and then we've got transferrin, and transferrin helps with iron transport. It's uh, a measure, something that we can measure as well to get an idea of what's going on um, with the blood. And so that's basically your really brief overview to the cardiovascular system. Um, this week we'll talk about hemostasis, which is blood clotting, and not to be confused with homeostasis. We'll talk about blood typing. We'll talk about the action potentials that are in the two different types of cardiac muscles or cardiac cells. Um, and I think that's about it. So.